A magnificent setting, two great teams, what drama here. It's right for Arsenal. Ian Wright yet again. What a shot, Matt's what a shot. Not good. Absolute Bobby Dazzler. In sports news this week, at Manchester United, Wayne Rooney paid the price for forgetting to sign Roy Keane's leaving card. <laughs> <laughs> and in the Tour de France, cyclists panic as they spot a random urine tester round the next corner. <laughs> With Ian and Rory this week, a comedian who was born and raised in Scotland. His heroes are battle-scarred boxers including Marvin Hagler, Evander Holofield and, coming from Glasgow, his mum. <laughs> it's Frankie Boyle! <laughs> And Jonathan this week is a Torquay United fan whose fear of flying means that she's never left the country. Although by the time Torquay qualify for Europe, she'll be able to teleport herself to the Bernabeu. <laughs> it's Helen Chamberlain. Yeah. We start the show this week with an Olympics question. Ian, Rory and Frankie, have a look at this. The Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. Here's Lord Sebastian Coe and one or two others you might recognise celebrating the historic moment when London was awarded the Olympic Games at the expense of poor old Paris. But one of the people who didn't get invited to any of the pre- or post-match celebrations was none other than former Olympic champion Linford Christie. So, Ian, Rory and Frankie, why was Linford snubbed by Tep? Is it because uh, he didn't want Linford Christie at the opening ceremony because any black man seen sprinting in London will be shot dead by the police? <laughs> uh, just let me check if that's the right answer. <laughs> How can Linford not be there? Our greatest, come on. Well, I well, that's actually the question, if you'd like to answer it. <laughs> It's great to have Frank on the, uh, on the show, because we can do lots of um, lazy Scottish stereotype jokes, can't we? About At your... your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> At your own risk, he said. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, what is a risk? Subtitles on 444 CFAX. Um, <laughs> are, you, uh, are you looking forward to the Olympics, Frankie, with your Scottish inheritance? Oh, yeah, we've, we've got a lot of uh, interest in the Olympics. I think we're doing the catering or something. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, you're not doing the catering. <laughs> life expectancy isn't that good in Glasgow, is it? What, what, I mean, how old are you? Your life expectancy in Glasgow. <laughs> Ian, can I ask, you were at the uh, match last week, of course, with that fantastic penalty. Have you got any thoughts? Um, I, what can I say about something like that? That he was shit. <laughs> If Ian Wright is in the team, there's no debate about who takes the penalty, is it, Ian? Exactly why I ended up with 185. Because I took every penalty that came along. <laughs> That was impossible. That was disrespectful to the players, to the league, and I think it's going to haunt them all season long. Thanks God they wanted him. One of the most embarrassing penalties I've ever seen. Spoken it was a bit like serious, a true but I mean gooner, it. I have to say. You know, you, know when, a you know when Boris talks, it's always going to be one hell of a funny line. <laughs> you set the standard this week just especially high. Yeah, but Bo <laughs> Boris, Boris, it's simple. It's 12 yards out. He shoots you the goal. Now, why do you want to complicate taking a penalty? They, yeah. they didn't look that embarrassed, though. They looked like they were embarrassed for a minute and then thought, wait a minute, we're millionaires. Who gives a shit? <laughs> why it. was Linford snubbed by some? I think it was that the excuse they gave was not that he was actually snubbed. They had enough sort of celebrity in, in the sort of bid committee and there was no room for him. I'll give you that. It's, it's a great answer. Well, according to Linford, the official reason the organising committee couldn't find a place for him in the torch relay was because they were full up. They did, however, somehow manage to find a place for Nell McAndrew, Floella Benjamin and Tim Henman. Whoever he is. <laughs> there are rumours that ballroom dancing may be included in the London Olympics as a demonstration sport. So there's a chance that Colin Jackson might just get that gold medal that's so far eluded him. The 2012 Olympics will spawn a whole range of spanking new sports facilities around the east end of London. At last. Hackney's going to get that dressage arena it's been crying out for all these years. <laughs> Boris, 
Chris, Jonathan and Helen, your question concerns a footballing tiff. Have a look at this. Those two great rivals, Germany and Holland, in some of their most famous clashes. Now, there's no love lost between the two countries when it comes to football, and recently relations have taken a turn for the worse. So, what caused these two sporting nations to fall out? Boris's team. How would you know? <laughs> because I've got the questions on the auto -cube. No, absolutely. No, the English, you, you don't know the problems between the Germans and the Dutch. I think you'll find we were very involved. And I don't... I don't... <laughs> and, and, I, and I quite don't understand the recently. It's been going forever. Yes. What is the problem? Well, what about you, what do you think? Well, how does he know if I don't know? <laughs> Before I give the correct answer, um, let's welcome Helen to the show. Helen! Yeah. Yeah. You know, no disrespectfulness, but to have a beautiful woman on the show lifts our spirits. But obviously, sitting on next to Boris, that's an accident waiting to happen. Anyway. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. She's blonde and she's in a safe here. Yes, yeah, she's fine. okay. All right, good, good, good. good. But also, you're something of an expert at poker. Is this right? Accidentally. Uh, turned out to be all right at poker. Rather, well, all right. How much money have you won at poker? Get ready for this. Half a million dollars. <laughs> at poker. That's unbelievable. Well, you say by accident. How did it happen? It was a televised tournament that I was invited to play in. I was invited to play in a celebrity qualifier. Most of the others were pros, some were online qualifiers. So I was up against the internet champion, the world champion, the European champion. So what champion do you do here qualifiers. then with all the... I know. <laughs> <laughs> they told me I was going to be sitting next to you. Ah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I'm just um, interested no, no, in seeing no, no, Boris's Boris. face light up every time you say poker. Yeah. <laughs> Caused uh, Germany and Holland to fall out. We want you to know a little know. bit more about poker. <laughs> <laughs> there is a possibility in, in a short amount of time you win five hundred thousand dollars. That's more what I won at Wimbledon. <laughs> and I spent at least two weeks working. How much did you win at Wimbledon? First Wimbledon. How much did you win? Uh, much less, probably three hundred. But you was twelve at the time. Yeah. Though, <laughs> You know, the Dutch are not, as far as I know, uh, a nation which is easy to get angry. The last time they got aggressive was the great Rizla strike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the problem we have really is that they are so goddamn good in football. Yeah. And they're actually much better set than we are. And for but some you... shape or form, we get lucky at the end or get a penalty. A little bit with the English too. But with the Dutch, we have to say... <laughs> a little bit, thing. you patronising sod. <laughs> Five, one. <laughs> But that's not, but no, hold it, give Boris his due, he's actually saying there that maybe the Dutch are better than the Germans. It takes something for a German man to say that the German team is not necessarily all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Or, just let me finish my answer. <laughs> <laughs> they have better individuals, okay. it looks better, but they don't come up with any result. You ever done football commentating, actually? <laughs> no. Because you're doing it for Germany, aren't you, in the World yes, Cup? For German yes. TV. And Ian, you'll be doing it for BBC TV, won't you? For the winners, so you yeah, two will be on the opposing them. sides. Imagine it's one all, right, and it's in the last five minutes of the two hours. Right? And they're just about, right? And you think, and England are just about to score, and you think they score. How do you react? Tears would start coming down for a start. Good. And, and then most probably, if we scored, I would burst into rapturous crying, and then I would most probably just collapse in a heap of happiness. Okay. <laughs> now let us contrast that with the German style, Boris. It's one nil up. The Germans are getting close. They might well score. They're passing. There's a cross from Klinsmann to um, <laughs> one of the other better players. And the, how would you react in your commentary? I would probably say another five minutes to go. It looks pretty good. <laughs> you could learn from the <laughs> What's the answer? I think it's something to do with the mascots clashing for the World Cup. How would you know? Because they both have lions and the colour. One's gold and Holland's mascot. Because uh, she knows her football. Mascot is orange. Is the right answer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Dutch reckon the Germans have stolen the idea for the official World Cup lion, Golio, from their own mascot, Dutchie. <laughs> During the creative meeting to come up with their mascot, the Dutch at first tried a little skunk. That's how they come up with the idea for the orange lion. <laughs> of course, the German mascot, Golio, will be facing stiff opposition from England's well-established World Cup mascot, quarter-finalio. <laughs> 
the end of that round, Boris's team has three, Ian's team has three. Yes. If anything ever goes wrong in sport, it's never the sportsman's fault. A fact which forms the basis of our excuses round. Ian's team, have a look at this. wonder kid Wayne Rooney but according to his boss Sir Alex Ferguson Wayne's fiery temperament is something that's completely beyond his control so why should that be Ian's team Wayne Rooney is 20 this week did you know that he is I did know yeah which isn't a great IQ but you know for... <laughs> I can't have the, the knocking of Wayne Rooney you know yeah. what I mean because can't have the knocking of Wayne Rooney. Rooney. no it because looks like someone shaved a monkey and kicked mm -hmm. it through a sports shop <laughs> Even in the World Cup, so <laughs> shit. Yeah. You didn't qualify. That's when we like country. it, sitting in pubs waiting for England to lose. <laughs> <laughs> what you like? You know, that is Come on, part. Cameron! <laughs> oh, and that's the kind of winning that attitude is. that's made your country what it is. <laughs> Wayne is a footballing genius at 20. He made his debut at 16. That was in Shrek. Right. <laughs> Everything he does is in the public eye. He's got no room for mistake, and everybody's always on his case. So probably not a good time to shag an old woman, then, is it, really? <laughs> he's made mistakes, and, you know, he will learn from that. For, no, he's just getting practice now. He's gonna, when he gets older, he's going to sleep with an older woman, so why not second. sleep with one now? Well, he's going to have a hard time finding one when he gets much older. <laughs> in fact, in the match, when he's knocking 40, he's going to be digging them up. What? <laughs> Man to look after someone who's got a bad temper, though. Well, the oh. thing about Fergie is every time he smiles, it looks like he gives him hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Ferguson's excuse that uh, Wayne Rooney's got a chip on his shoulder? He said, as part of the government's new electronic tagging scheme <laughs> for, <laughs> for all people from Liverpool. I think Ferguson <laughs> did some psychological research into um, Rooney's background. You know, his family background, his, the history of the Irish immigrant family, and concluded that it was because he was a scouser. <laughs> it's the right answer. <laughs> yes, according to Sir Alex, Wayne Rooney behaves the way he does because he's a scouser. Rooney's from Liverpool, and everyone from that city has a chip on their shoulder. You can't say that! Like a lot of the country, Wayne is very worried about the flu pandemic. What with that and the harsh winter, it could completely wipe out his love life. <laughs> that was a good one. I'm glad I didn't miss that one. I was so good. I was driving. I like that. Boris's team, here's the great new hope of Middle England, Scotsman Andrew Murray, in action at this year's Wimbledon. Go on, Andy. US Open a couple of months later, the Scottish teenager was violently sick during the final set of his first round match against Andre Pavel. So, what was his excuse for throwing up Boris's team? <laughs> oh. Sorry. I'm hoping that if he wins Wimbledon, they'll make that tune to like a statue with a fountain coming out. <laughs> He's the only man in Scotland who's ever played tennis, <laughs> so far as we know. I reckon he was probably being bullied at school one day and he just tried to defend himself with whatever he could find in his locker. <laughs> <laughs> Developed his reflexes that well, the, way. The thing is, he's British when he's winning, he's mm. Scottish when he loses. Mm. Yes, in the English media. Yeah. yeah. In Scotland, he's always Scottish until he starts losing and then we'll forget about tennis altogether. <laughs> and start paying attention to some other gay sports. <laughs> Do we look gay? Do we look gay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, maybe he's just a nurse, perhaps. 17 years old, you're playing at, you know, the American Open. You're 17 years old. Well, although you were, how old were you when you won Wimbledon? I was 17. Oh. 
It really worries me that he gets sick in the match. Yes. I mean, well, when was the last time you were sick, boss? Uh, the last time I went to the Oktoberfest, which is the big beer festival in Germany. I don't need to explain you, maybe to the audience. It's at the end of September, early October, where... That's why it's called Oktoberfest. <laughs> and uh, we had this tennis tournament. And if you're a tennis player, there's so one, Andre Agassi, by name, he said, listen, you're from town and you know the, the envi environment very well. Why don't you show me the best beer tent there is? So you took Andre Agassi to the Oktoberfest? Yes. And you both got legless? Well, I think I got worse than him because I was with my doubles partner. And, and the, the thing is there, you have a round of beer, a, you know, big, big pin, and then you have a little schnapps in between. Just a little schnapps? Right, just, just to, you know, <laughs> to put it down. And my doubles partner put all the schnapps in the, the beer. What a <laughs> It'd be quite galling if you'd just been beaten in a tournament in August. A Andre Agassi shook your hand and went, I was pissed there. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was uh, Andrew Murray's excuse for being sick? I actually do know the answer of this because Andrew Murray was a guest on our show what, on Saturday what, why morning. You, why you let us wait for ten minutes? <laughs> that, that was what? My embarrassment at the Octoberfest and now you have the answer. Oh, I do actually know the proper answer to this. Well, first you have to let the captain know whether I would agree with that answer before okay. you talk to him. He's very strict on the rules. It's yes. unlike his people, I know, but there we go. <laughs> right, I think I do know the answer to this, because Andrew was a guest on my Saturday morning show, and we asked him about it, and he said he had a little bit of stomach flu. He'd been sick. Well, then now you can talk to him. Now I understand. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, but I haven't told you the answer yet. Well, but it sounds like you mean You trust mean it. me. Okay. Sounds like yeah. you mean it. You've He'd been me. sick. Have you definitely checked this with Boris? <laughs> <laughs> he was advised to drink because he'd already been sick off court. He was advised to drink and he gutsed back too much sports drink and it all came back out again. You're quite right. In fact, Andy Murray blamed his behaviour on a sodium rich energy drink which was meant to stop him cramping. But he drank too much too quickly and he was sick. The pool of vomit was quickly soaked up with a pile of sawdust placed in a bucket and is currently ranked Britain's number four. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's just absolutely yeah. disgraceful, man. In the week before Wimbledon, Andrew Murray lasted three rounds at the Stella Artois before collapsing. That's three rounds of Stella for you. <laughs> he then shat himself and had a fight with the umpire. That's Scotsman for you. <laughs> at the end of that round, Boris has six points and Ian has six points. Of course. a new round now called Claim to Fame. Lots of sportsmen and women have given their all in their particular field, but can you work out what their sporting achievements are with just a little bit of light interrogation? Here's where we find out, so can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, this is Tim, he's 46 and he comes from Skegby in Nottinghamshire. But what's his sporting claim to fame? Ian's team. Were you a star in the 80s? Uh, yes. Have you ever knowingly played for Tottenham Hotspur? <laughs> no, thank goodness. Were mm. you Ian Botham's body double for any period of time? <laughs> uh, not quite his double, no. Right. Does your sport have an equivalent in the able-bodied Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that chair sure hasn't got wheels on. <laughs> it involves a ball, your sport. It does involve a ball, yes. Do you wear gloves? Yes, I did, yes. Black or white gloves? Uh, mainly white. Have you got something against black gloves? <laughs> Does your sport have the same name as a small insect that makes a buzzing noise by rubbing its wing cases against its legs? Yes, it does. So, volleyball. <laughs> uh, so, you're a cricketer. Did you play county cricket? I did, yes. For the county of Nottinghamshire? I did, yes. Were you a batsman? I was a batsman. Are you the highest? Did you ever go out to play cricket, look about and go, oh, this is a shit game. <laughs> Many a time. And then just leave. <laughs> Didn't leave. I'll give you a clue. Try not to think of county level. Ah, uh, schoolboy level. <laughs> <laughs> did you play for England? I did play for England. Ah. Oh, and specifically for uh, which England team? One of the many team. losing England cricket teams, Lee? Well, they'll never reach the pinnacles of the Scottish cricket team. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> you played in that famous English winning side what done that really remind, great yeah, thing. Remind, yes, remind what a great thing. Um, what have they done recently? The, the Ashes. Ashes. The Ashes. It's not the first time, is it? No, the e other time. Yes, that'll do! That's <laughs> it, yes. <laughs> 
Tim, of course, is the Notts and England uh, batsman, scored two centuries in the last Ashes triumph in 1985. Nice one. And here is Tim in his finest hour. No doubt where that's gone. Rattle the way to the boundary. 100 to Tim Robinson and a very, very good one as well. Brilliant stroke. What a nice way to bring up the century. Second mystery guest, please. OK, this is Robin. He's 70 and he comes from County Antrim in Northern Ireland. But Boris's team, what's his sporting claim to fame? Are you the jackal? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> is it safe? No. <laughs> is it safe? No. <laughs> is it... <laughs> no. First of all, you look very good for seven years old. Well said, boss. Have you played in a team sport or an individual sport? Team sport. Small team. Small team. Did it include a ball? No. Would I you like to have had a ball, but you couldn't afford one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you play for your country? Yes. Have you no. got enough money for heating this winter? <laughs> That's out of order. You need that's out of order. One cold snap can finish someone off. I'm always open to offers. Have you won medals? Yes. Okay. Not, not in English, then. <laughs> what is your favourite sport? That's <laughs> <laughs> dumpy. Golf. Golf. Did you win a medal in golf? No. <laughs> Which Olympics did you win a medal? 1964. There you go. Come on. Anybody else win a medal here at the Olympics, by the way? <laughs> so, 64 Olympics. Now, Winter Olympics. So, it's not. Uh, now, I'm assuming. Winter, Olymp Winter Olympics. Excuse yeah. me. Don't interrupt me now. I Sorry. got this guy. <laughs> Winter Olympics 64. That was played in Salt Lake City. No. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Have you dyed your hair white for this evening? <laughs> no, sir. So you are naturally silver-haired? Yes. Are you available Christmas Eve to come out? <laughs> Were there four of you in your team? The medal event that I wanted in did not have four people. Two people. Two, ah. two people in your sport. Is your name Bob and do you have a sleigh? <laughs> <laughs> My name is not Bob, and I had a sleigh. Were you the bobsledding yes. champion at the Olympics in 1964? I'm going to give you that. Well, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's Robin Dixon, now better known as Lord Glentoran. Together with Tony Nash, they won the gold in the two-man bobsleigh at the 1964 Winter Olympics. The gold medal, the gold medal. Dixon safely aboard, a tremendous shove by Dixon, first the 50 metre mark, and a very good start indeed for Great Britain. We have to about 80 miles an hour now, very good line round the bend. At the end of that round, Ian's team has 11 points, Boris' team in the lead with 12 points. That's yes. what I'm talking about here, yes. Come on. We finish the show with the name game. The team in front goes first, which means that Jonathan will be doing the clues. OK. And away you go. OK. Your time starts now. Our uh, first one is a tennis player, young Spanish guy, very, very good. He's going to possibly Nadal. win. Nadal. Rafael. Nadal. Yes. Really. Second name, uh, you always a snooker player. He might get the bird flu. You don't want him to sneeze on you. Quack, 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 quack. John Parrot. That's right. Well done. OK. Uh, all right. Uh, this is an Australian bloke. Uh, I think it's um, a name for a beer can in Australia. It's past me tinny. now. A tinny. First name, a little mouse. That's mouse in German. Is uh, like <laughs> a little one in the film, something little. Stu Stuart. Stu Stuart. 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 Thank you. He didn't speak like that. First name is, uh, is, like, uh, is like Mr. Steel. Um, um, Second name, if you are failure, you are something bean. You are... Has been. Has. Has. 
A Tommy. Yeah, uh, blimey. Oh, blimey. <laughs> oh, blimey. All right, I think this bloke has something to do with your football team. Uh, if he had a son, it would be Ro Junior. His name is... Roy Le Leroy Senior. Roy Senior, there you go. OK. Oh, oh right. <laughs> Something, something gander. Where does he wander? Goosey. Upstairs, goosin. Goosen. Uh, <laughs> when you go to a dentist, if you say, I need new ones of these, you'll say, put some more ones in. These are called teeth. And if you had some new ones, you would say, when you have something newly <laughs> fitted, it's re-teethed. Re yes, re-teethed. <laughs> re this is a disgrace! This is a joke! Oh, quiet, cowboy. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, oh, this is a German football player. I know that, but his name is... Um, Old Young. Well, how do I know? He plays for German team. I don't care. His first name is... You know there's a, the actor Rod, someone, in In the Heat of the Night? Rod... Oh. Steiger. Rod Thank Steiger. Thank you. Yeah. Rod Steiger. And his first name is Pig. You are Pig. Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger. Bastian. Bastian. Jesus Christ. Okay, lead singer of YMCA, your team <laughs> needs 10 points. Yeah. And it's Rory to do the asking. And your time. <laughs> Away, hang on a minute. Okay. Now, former manager of Hearts. George Burley. Hey, very good. Uh, Vava Voom. Uh, Thierry Henry. Yeah, formerly the second highest golfer. Is there someone put that in on yeah. purpose? Yeah. This is a Welsh golfer. He has the first Christian name as um, Thingy Walsh. He supports Arsenal, you know. Um, Bradley. Yeah, Bradley and... It's Tridge, second, Bradley Bra Tridge. Very good. Yeah. Uh, this is um, a, a Glasgow Rangers striker. He's from Spain. He sounds like Mexican food. Um, what are those Nacho things? Novo. Nacho Novo. Nacho oh, Novo. Fantastic. Go this on. is... <laughs> This is, um, an, he's, this is a guy who's made nine attempts to swim the channel, apparently, and failed them all in 1911. <laughs> yes, you know who it is already. Um, <laughs> his second name was the Dutch painter who painted King Henry VIII. Hans. He's from Scotland. Han Hans. Hans Christian Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's close enough. Um, Montague Holbein. Can't remember. Oh, have that. Yeah, um, this is, he's a Costa Rican defender. His first name is Spanish for Paul. Paolo. Pablo, very good. And his, <laughs> his second name is on a little furry animal that you use to make fur coats out of. Um, Minx. No, no, like, like a hamster. And it's, it, if Jimmy Hill wanted something to cool, Ferret. to cool that part of his, <laughs> to cool that part of his body down, he'd use not a, a chin warmer, a chin. A chin fur. A chin. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Who's Pablo Gerbil? <laughs> it's not getting. You know, it's um, you got to. Hey man, you got to just. Chill out. Chill. Yeah. Chill. Chin, chin. chin chiller. Chin. Yeah. At the end of that round, Ian's team has 16 points, but this week's winner, Boris's team with 20 points. Yes. Boris, Jonathan, Helen. My name's Lee Mack. Join us next week on They Think It's All Over. Goodbye. There's more from Jonathan Ross on Film 2005 next here on BBC One Northern Ireland with Terry Gilliam and Orlando Bloom.